Hi. Hi. Oh, Thanks so much. She was coming back. Last trip of the year. Possibly last trip of uh, this channel. <laughs> that is that depressing? Or? <laughs> We're gonna go out, do it in style, right? <laughs> this is a three part series on my time in Japan, discovering and exploring a new culture I've always wanted to experience. And at the same time, reflecting on my career why I'm quitting YouTube, and what's next. Thank you, Epidemic Sound, for making this whole trip happen. And thank you for supporting me throughout my YouTube career. Time to get some travel feels for what might be the last time. I miss you. Let's make this a good last trip. The last trip? <laughs> We landed and immediately started to explore the streets of Tokyo, which is probably the biggest and cleanest city I've ever been to in my life. I love how different everything looks, and it's just fun exploring the streets. Oh, heck yes. We're in freaking Japan. Boys. I don't know about you, but this is like one of those countries that I've always wanted to see. Maddie's just on like any back road. He's like, this is incredible. Like, there's so <laughs> many amazing back roads. Like, this is the best place ever. Look at this, ever. look at this, look at this. <laughs> Do you know that meme where it's like, should I move here? But that's me, you have a family. So. <laughs> I mean, you have a year off. You can maybe yeah. move here next year. This is a little bittersweet in a way. This is, this is possibly the last one. I mean, the first one with Chris, I can't believe we haven't actually gone on a trip before. I know, that's it's always wild. the thing. I was like, yes, first trip with Maddie. And he's like, now I'm not doing anything else. Last like, also. Last trip with Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's make it a banger. Yeah. You know what I've been bad at? Uh, tripod shots. <laughs> it's funny, I don't think I have a single video on my channel about like how to use a tripod. And that's how little I've cared about tripod shots. Uh, so this video is gonna try to rectify some of that, maybe. We'll see. I'm just excited to be in Japan. Uh. I think a lot of times we use movement as kind of like a crutch instead of finding the perfect... It's okay. <laughs> instead of finding the perfect angle, the perfect lighting, the perfect framing, we just cheat with movement. We take a gimbal and we do some crazy movement instead of actually designing the shot and planning it out and seeing what's the best. Uh, this place is chaotic and crazy, I love it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's it's harder to design a tripod shot. Kind of like um, with, with lenses, when I started filmmaking, I was drawn to like zoom lenses because they right away look super cinematic and cool. And the more I get into filmmaking, the longer I've been doing this, the more I just love wide lenses because you can just fill the frame with so much and tell so much story at the same time. But it is harder to use a wide angle lens because there's so much to think about. You're not just getting that perfect uh, shallow depth of field bokeh in the background. You actually have to think about like what's, what's going on in your frame other than just your subject. Don't get me wrong, gimbal shots are also incredible. The key is to know when to use one and how to do it right. By the way, if you're wondering where I got the music and sound effects for this video, it's all from Epidemic Sound. And if you need music, use the discount code MADDIE30 to get 30 days free. One of the things that I've been doing a lot recently with music is thinking about what mood or tone does this video or section of a video need to convey the story? And Epidemic Sound has so many great tools to quickly help me find the songs I'm looking for, including curated recommendations for you based on what you've liked, and even the ability to find similar songs with just one click. So you can find music you need to make your videos fast and easy. Remember, to get 30 days free, use the code MADDIE30, and thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. So here's a few quick tips on tripod shots. Framing is everything. Leading lines, symmetry, frames within frames, etc., etc. This is all the stuff that's super important. And it helps sometimes to just take the camera off the tripod and find the right framing and then bring the tripod there. Or use an app on your phone like Cadrage, which lets you choose your camera and lens and then you can find your framing. And you wanna be using all of these tools and techniques to make sure you have a strong focal point. Where do you want the audio? 
audience to be looking. The leading lines or frames within frames should be all pointing at your subject because there's no movement to help you bring the focal point there. Lighting is also one of the best ways to guide the viewer's attention. And you wanna grab a wide, a medium, and a tight shot. That's how you get that perception of movement even though there is no camera movement. One of the things I've, I've been really bad at too is getting like insert shots. So it's not, you're not just getting one tripod shot, you're mixing up a bunch of different tripod shots, which also kind of brings that movement. And so, yeah, it's static shots, but you're showing this, 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 and then it adds this like, in a way movement, even though they're all static shots. You're telling the story through a whole bunch of frames. And I'm so jealous of like a Danny Gravertz who's so good at those like insert shots that just fit perfectly. Uh, so yeah, time to practice. And then of course you can have movement within the frame. Your subject can be moving around so there's some sort of movement still even though the camera isn't moving. If you do these well, tripod shots are not as boring as you think. They can be really, really interesting and you can always throw in a little bit of slow zoom to create a little bit more intrigue. And I'm not saying you have to start using tripod shots for everything now, I'm just saying that it's one tool that I haven't been fully utilizing, I think, in my filmmaking career, just because I thought it was boring or pointless or not as cool as like a slider gimbal shot or a drone shot. Um, so I've been, I've been neglecting them and now I'm like, now I'm really fascinated by them. With that, I'm even bringing around a, like an actual tripod, whereas usually I never travel around with a tripod. I just have my, my gorilla pod, little tripod, and then I have a gimbal or, well, I don't travel with sliders, but a gimbal or drones and that kind of stuff for movement or just doing handheld. Um, and now I'm actually traveling around with a, with a tripod and trying to be more intentional about when to move the camera and when to just keep it static. Chris, do you ever do tripod shots? I really <laughs> like tripod shots personally. Cause I, I came from like, always shooting with the gimbal. Yeah. Like I always praised it being like this, the gimbal changed my business, movement is we everything. Need movement on every shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now I'm like, no, static, kind of Wes Anderson kind of type yeah. of framing. It's just really nice. I don't know if that's just the zeitgeist right now. That's like the trend or is that just a, like I think it might be a development in your like your process as a filmmaker yeah. also. Like I was just saying like I used to, just, yeah, I started with like a 50 mil cause it's like really cool to get shallow out the field. And now, yeah. As I get progressed in my filmmaking, I want like wider and wider because I want to challenge myself with like the whole frame versus just yeah. the subject. You know? As you like progress in your career, you'd be like, all right, now is the time for the gimbal. Now is the time for yeah. the 50. Now is the yeah. time for the tripod. Yeah. And then that's when it becomes like the, the cohesiveness of your style. Yeah. yeah, it's actually using those tools for the purpose. Like, okay, static shot, we need stability in this part yeah. of the story, whatever. Okay, this part, the chaotic. You want some more energy? Okay, let's go handheld here. And then yep. like, okay, now we want like godlike camera, okay, gimbal to yep. like signify whatever, whatever in your story. That's when, that's when you like hit like a different level of filmmaking. hundred percent. Like, but then I just, I don't know what it is. Why is like, why is no one talking about pan movements though? <laughs> What happened to the video tripod Pants head? It's just though, not right? cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you do watch like a like you watch like a Fincher movie, and they're yeah. like perfect pan, like tail, whatever. Whenever the subject is moving, it's perfectly moving. Yeah, but no one talks about it on YouTube. No. It's not cool. It's not sexy. No, it's definitely <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but it, then yeah, you said Hollywood uses it so. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. That's where we're gonna end up. Yeah. After yeah, all we'll of this, we'll eventually get there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I only do pan I movements. Just like <laughs> check this pan. This yeah. is sick. <laughs> And after a few tripod shots, camera movement is also so much more powerful. When the camera does start moving, there's a purpose to it. It's signaling something to the viewer, something is about to happen, and contrast in filmmaking is so important. Like for example, if your edit is all a bunch of tight shots, the first couple your brain is like, okay, what am I looking at? This is interesting. And after the 20th one, your brain is like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at, I'm bored. Whereas if you put a tight shot in when you really want the audience to pay attention to something very specific, it can be super powerful. It's all about contrast in filmmaking and life in general. I feel like I've been hustling and working so hard, spending countless hours learning about filmmaking, YouTube, making videos, building a business, working harder than I ever have. And now this next phase, I feel like I need 
some slow time. I want to be able to sit down at a cafe in the middle of the day and drink a nice coffee without stressing or thinking about how I could be doing this or that or being more productive. There's so many things I need to do and get done. I can't just be sitting here. I think it'll be more about just doing nothing, more learning, more recalibrating, and hopefully that will help me to innovate and figure out what I want to do for the next phase of my life and career. We finished the day off with an epic helicopter ride, which was just such a cool way to see how huge Tokyo is. It feels like it just goes on forever and ever. And with Mount Fuji in the background, it's just a reminder that I'm far from home. We had some sushi, of course, and checked out Shibuya Crossing, which is that crazy free-for-all crosswalk that you guys have all probably seen a million times. And finished the night off in this little tiny alleyway with tons of restaurants and bars packed in, which was just another opportunity for me to think about, should I be on a tripod, a gimbal, or just get handheld shots to make this feel a little bit more chaotic? And that's what it was there. But that's a wrap on day one in Japan. Next episode, we leave the city to get some epic views and talk about one of the secret secrets of my success. Thank you.